Time. And with me now is Jason Johnson, politics editor at TheRoot.com, MSNBC political analyst and host of The Hugh Hewitt Show on the Salem Radio Network, Hugh Hewitt, and journalist and political analyst Aaron McPike, also my friend. Thanks to all of you for being here. Aaron, I want to start with you. What a day of events. Uh, yeah. Look at that split screen. We're so discordant. The whole right. thing. Right. The whole what do you, what do you make of this moment? These tens of thousands of people, women, marching for their rights, and then the interfaith service, Donald Trump's presidency underway. Well, this march, to me, feels like kind of the wrong timing. Mm. Everybody's protesting inauguration. I mean, the guy was going to be sworn in anyway. It just feels like, why didn't this happen right after the election or during the election or at some other point? I, I think, you know, maybe we'll see more activity from this group of women going forward. But today feels like a very strange day for it to me. Hugh, let me turn to you. We are looking at all of these protesters, and we have been saying all along that one of President Trump's challenges is going to be to unify this country. And Way, the day before the inaugural address said this is going to be a unifying speech. The Washington Post makes the point that the speech had a number of words we've never heard before in an inaugural address, words like bleed, ravages, politicians, carnage. What did you make of this address? Did it fall short of your expectations in terms of unity? It's actually growing on me, Kristen. It was a realism speech. It was very bracing, very direct, unambiguous. The word carnage, the, the vow to eradicate radical Islamic terror from the face of the earth. It was blunt. And I would have liked a little bit more of the graciousness that marked his luncheon remarks with regards to former President Clinton and Secretary Clinton. On the other hand, it reflects a lot of what's going on in America. Whether you, you look at J.D. Vance's Hillbilly Elegy, if you see the movie Moonlit, uh, Moonlight, if you go and see Patriots Day, there is a lot of carnage in America. And so the president yesterday spoke from his heart, I think authentically, directly, and it, it's very, Peggy Noonan's take in the Wall Street Journal today, very jarring, and I agree with her, but it, it makes people think. Jason, she makes the point there was a real reality check there for some people. The entire speech, though, wasn't necessarily divisive. And I saw a lot of Democrats, including President Obama, clapping during this part of the address. Take a listen. A new national pride will stir ourselves, lift our sights, and heal our divisions. It's time to remember that old wisdom our soldiers will never forget, that whether we are black or brown or white, we all bleed the same red blood of patriots. Jason, what did you make of that part of the speech? I mean, yes, whether you're black or brown or white, he didn't mention Muslim or LGBT. Look, Donald Trump is not a unifier, and everyone is going to that during the speech because it's polite and it's what you're supposed to do in a peaceful transfer of power. There has been no president in recent history who I think is going to be held more accountable for what he accomplishes than what he says. Look, if Donald Trump gets into office and improves the economy and comes up with a better health care plan, people will like him. But there's not much in that speech that is any different from most of his campaign speeches. And that's not unifying. That's not something that brings Americans together. It's very aggressive, very assertive, and doesn't give many people who weren't included in his coalition of victory a sense that they're part of his coalition of governing. Aaron, what struck me is it was sort of a takedown of all of Washington, oh, the people yeah. he has to work with, Republicans and Democrats. I actually kind of felt uncomfortable watching the speech for that same mm. reason, but when I read it later, I had much the same reaction mm. that Hugh did, that there was a lot of realism. There were two lines that I think people have not talked a whole lot about that I think we'll be talking about in the years to come. And one, he mentioned eradicating radical Islamic terror from the mm. face of the earth. I think he might come to regret that line because that will be almost impossible for him to do. The other thing was he was talking about how this is a movement with tens of millions of people that we've never seen before. Well, actually, reality check, it was a movement that big that actually brought, brought Barack Obama mm. to Washington. And you may remember, and people forget this, Barack Obama was not the candidate of the establishment either. Hillary Clinton right. was. So Barack Obama owed the establishment nothing. And people are talking about how the Democratic Party is decimated now. Well, we might see that very same thing happen to the Republican Party. Um, Neither of these two men owed the establishment anything. Amazingly, a lot of parallels you can draw yeah. between the two men. Hugh, final word to you, and we, we have, we're really running out of time here, but on Monday, what do you think we're going to see? 
I hope we see a lot of action, executive orders, a lot of movement immediately. And I also hope we see President Trump salute the women who are there today. 66 million women voted for Hillary Clinton. Three of them are staying with me in, uh, in the inner, uh, inside the beltway at my home. And I'm glad they're there showing America and showing the world that indeed the institution is still in place and everybody is still welcome to speak their mind in America. All right, Jason, I'm actually going to give you the final word. Uh, do Democrats start looking like obstructionists if they try to block everything that a President Trump tries to do? No, no, the Democrats will look like an opposition party. Look, their job is to try and pass an agenda. Their job is to assess whether Donald Trump is going to do a good, do a good job one way or another. I will say this about his speech also. He said now is not the time for talk. Now is the time for action. And he said he's going to take the weekend off. That's not the kind of message and action combination that I want to see. Let's see what this president really does once he gets into office on Monday after his first vacation. All right, fantastic conversation, Jason, Hugh, and Aaron. Thank you. And that'll do it for me for this half hour.